name is Yasmin Majali. I'm a Palestinian-American based here in Ramallah, and I'm the co-founder of Baby Fist, um, a Palestinian-based fashion brand, which manufactures clothing in Gaza to use the funds for to run menstruation education campaigns for middle school students here in Palestine. Um, so the pandemic here in Palestine has just provided another lens with which we can analyze the effects of occupation. I've heard it said that the coronavirus is something along the lines of the great equalizer, you know, that, that it's dissolved national lines and racial lines and even economic lines and that no one is, is safe from it. And that, that might be true that the virus itself doesn't discriminate, but the systems which do discriminate are still in place, right? So, you know, specifically here in Palestine, um, we're under quarantine, but how do you how do you go in quarantine when you know four families in the last three weeks alone have had their houses demolished by by the Israeli army? There are two million Palestinians in Gaza who who are living in essentially an open air prison um, and who have a decayed healthcare system and are not allowed to bring in necessary medical supplies to help prevent the spread of the pandemic and to help treat those who've already who've already uh, contracted the disease. Um, and so we've taken to community and grassroots efforts to, to supplement that. Um, and so one example is uh, a, group, a community um, in the north of Palestine near Abzik, which attempted to construct a makeshift clinic to treat those um, who, are, who, who had contracted the disease and then also to provide some ha emergency housing for those who had been pushed out of their homes um, and then within days, the, the IDF had come and demolished, demolished the clinic and, and confiscated the building materials. So, so, you know, even in the face of the pandemic, the occupation and, and land grabbing is, is in full force. My greatest concerns, well, one of them is definitely the economic impact um, on, on, on families. So, so many... Palestinians are in the workforce, um, work hour, work jobs in which they are paid hourly, um, hourly wages, and uh, they've been out of work for weeks now. I'm also concerned about the the kind of the pre-existing cracks in the foundation, right, of of society that this virus is exposed. And so, you know, looking at who is most vulnerable in our society, for me personally, my work. My work will include all of these things, right? And so just including a wider variety of influences um, in, my, in my perception of intersectionality, right? So when you're talking about women's rights, you're talking about the Palestinian cause, you're talking about capitalism, you're talking about consumerism, you're talking about environmental impact. And so it's just, it's just, it's not feasible anymore for us as a, as a globe to view issues in isolation we need to be viewing all issues as interconnected with others and this is the only way we're ever going to be able to change anything what's happened now is we've been given a space there's a space here for us to imagine a new world what gives me hope are all of the community-based and grassroots efforts that have risen over the last several weeks in the face of this crisis to see um, how many communities have come together to problem solve, right? Because so many of our systems, whether it's healthcare or government, um, are lacking. You know, the, the, the gaps in these systems have really proven themselves um, when people who, who rely on them are, are not given the help that they need. And so these, these, uh, these community-based efforts and grassroots efforts have really stepped up to try and fill in the gaps, to even reimagine new systems. Um, and so that has just been really incredible to see all over the world. Um, and it really does give me hope.